not to NH-D15 Chromax Black Dual Tire CPU Cooler. This is the cooler I will be showing you how to install on the AM4 socket. In today's video, there will be timestamps in the description below. For certain part of the video you'd like to jump to, you're more than welcome to do so. Some other links down that may interest you. And also, don't get the all that fun YouTube stuff on your way down to that description box. So without wasting a lot of your time, let's flip you over and we'll show you how to get this thing installed on the AM4 socket. And to get started, we have everything laid out here that we need for today's install of the Noctua NH-D15 CPU air cooler. We have the air cooler with the two fans right here. The top one is not put on. We have the AMD installation guide. We have the two brackets pulled out of the kit that is dedicated for, AM, for AMD installs. You do have two separate collars of the spacers that you'll need to put underneath these between these and the motherboard. The AM4 takes the gray one and the other AMD sockets takes the white one. We have the four screws that will go down through these brackets that goes down through the spacers and it will go into the back plate that comes on your AM4 motherboard. We have the two extra fan brackets here out of the kit that we'll be putting on this fan to get it installed. We do have the fan splitter that comes in the kit and the two low noise adapters here laid out, which I'll explain a little bit more about these when we get to that step of the process. And we do have our, our Noctua thermal paste here that comes within the kit. As far as the tools you may need, I got a number two magnetized tip Phillips screwdriver here. I have my number two extension bit that's also magnetized. If you don't have one of these or a long number two Phillips, they do include this little gray one here for you that comes in the kit to install it with. So you don't have to go and buy a long, long screwdriver or an extension bit if you don't have one. And I also have my little spatula here for the thermal paste, which we'll get into that when we get into putting the thermal paste into, onto the CPU. But that's pretty well everything that you're gonna need for this procedure. And you're gonna need your motherboard that, that's already prepped and ready for your CPU installation. So let me get all this cleaned off of here. I'll show you how to get this thing installed on the AM4 motherboard. All right, everyone, we have the motherboard here that's prepped and ready to go here. You should have your motherboard at this step by the, by the time you're ready to put your CPU cooler on. We've got the CPU installed, we've got the NVMe drive put in. I do have the RAM pulled out, that way you can see the process, which we will be putting the RAMs in before we put that second fan on, just for the clearance issues. This is like if you're putting it on a new build. If, you, if you're replacing a CPU cooler, you'll have to take your old one off, which is just the exact off the steps that you did to put it on but this is like a new build when you take these two plastic brackets off here it was just pretty simple take your number two phillips pull the two screws out of each one of them and then pull the plastic brackets up off i do recommend keeping these because there is some air coolers and water coolers that do utilize these brackets and if you see in my other videos i normally keep all my spare components i keep mine inside the motherboard box that way everything's in one place and there ain't a very big box to keep track of so to me it's just a nice place to keep all your spare parts all right so we've got the two brackets removed since we have it to this point we're going to go ahead and put our thermal paste on here that noctua provides uh if you're using this cooler and you don't have a bunch of thermal paste laying around you know you're gonna have to use what they provide which they they do have pretty good thermal paste uh we'll take the cap off over here there is different schools of thought on this. A lot of people say you put a P-size drop in the middle and let the heat spread it, spread it out. Me personally, I like to spread mine out. That way if I do put too much on, I know I can take off the excess. Or if I don't put enough on there, and if I don't have enough on there, I can add a little bit more if needed. And I also know I get good complete coverage over the CPU. This don't have to be real thick, just enough to cover up the writing pretty much. Let me get this spread out here and I'll be back. All right, I think that's pretty good coverage of uh, thermal paste on there. Next thing we'll be doing is installing the brackets. All right, guys, we got the brackets pulled out here. We have the gray spacer that you need for AM4 socket. The white ones is for any other AM socket, but for AM4, you need these gray spacers. And we do have our four screws there that will go down through these brackets, down through the spacers, and into the included backplate for the AM4 motherboards. If you look at the end of the bracket here, you have two different holes. We will be using the most outer hole here, or towards the top of like the rainbow, I guess you could call it where it bows outwards. And when you install these plates, don't be like me and install them wrong. Make sure they are bowed in towards the CPU, like this one here sitting here. Make sure it's bowed in where the bow's going towards the CPU. Okay, you pick up the plate, 
put your spacers on here, just like so. You line them up. And you want to just get one of these started. You don't want to tighten it down all the way because you may have to readjust a little bit to get the second one started. Okay, there's that one started. Then we're going to go over here and get this one started. And you don't need these real tight. You just want them snug. And right now, pressure or how much pressure you have on each one really don't matter as far as these brackets go. Just one about wrist tight with a regular size screwdriver. All right, that feels pretty sturdy. Then we'll do the other side the exact same way. I'll be back when I get this second bracket put on here for you. One other quick thing to keep track of when you install these brackets, make sure the screw that's popping up out of the brackets are facing upwards and not downwards. Because that's what your heat sink gonna actually end up screwing down into. So let's get the heat sink over here now. Okay, we're gonna take this middle fan out. That way we have access to them central screws that we need. There we go. Need to flip it over. You need to make sure you take this little plastic plate off the bottom, which it's kind of hard to install with these on, but I guess it could be done. But you wanna make sure you take this off. If you don't, your CPU will overheat. And by looking at the CPU cooler, it really don't matter which side goes on which. They look like they're pretty well the same exact exact on both sides you just set them down over top of them brackets line up them screws okay this here's where this nice long screwdriver that they provide you with comes into play if you don't have an extension bit but i will be using my extension bit in today's example okay once you got the screws lined up you want to start with one side just get it started you don't want to really tighten it down you want to try to keep the pressure even on this when you're doing these two now you just want to do two three turns on each side alternating back and forth and again you don't need these extremely tight the springs won't let you ever tighten them but you do want to get them about wrist tight with a screwdriver you know regular regular size screwdriver or the included screwdriver whichever way your situation may be you don't need these you know you ain't sealing against water or air or anything but you do want to put them down there till they bought them out at least all right there we go since that fan, that outer fan is going to be right here over top of the rim, we're going to go ahead and let me get my rim installed here. All right, there we go. We got our rim installed. And you want to get your rim installed before you put the fan on because it's going to determine how far down your, your fan is going to go on the front. We'll go ahead and put this center fan back in. And when you do your fans, me personally, since my CPU header up here is for my fans up here, I like to try to keep my cabling heading that way towards that CPU fan header. Just like you take it off, you take your inner fan and slide it down in there. I try to sl I slide it down as far as I can and just pull back the clips and lock it. You do the exact same thing on the other side. Lock it in there, there we go. All right, now we got the second fan or the outer fan here pulled out. We need to put the brackets on for it before we can connect it to the front of the heat sink. And take a little wire, just run them, start them down in these holes here. You put the one side, you get the one side put down in the hole, go underneath these little rubber ends right here. Lift it up, put the other one, put the other side in. Okay, we're spinning around here. We do the other side the exact same way, just like so. And when you put your clips on, your fan clips on, you want to make sure that you're putting them down through the open side of the fan, not the side that you got the fan grill on it. Unless you're gonna go with a pull configuration where the fan's pulling the air through, which I guess you could do on this. But I like pushing my hair through the air cooler, so I, I wanna make sure I got my clip. When you're done, the clip should be sticking out towards where the bracket is holding the fan motor in the spot. This is if you're going with a pull configuration where you're pulling the air through. Now, if you got fancy ARGB ram or something like that, you may wanna put this on the back side of the cooler which you'd have to put these clips on the other way that way it'd be pouring air through that way you can still see your rgb ram there's something to keep in mind then you don't have to worry about your ram clearance either but just like we did that middle fan we're gonna get it lined up i'm gonna set mine right down on top of my ram i'm gonna let the ram the fan actually set on top of the rim you're gonna pull this little metal clip back till it locks in the spot here you're gonna turn it around here we're gonna do this side the same same way it's pretty easy you don't have to pull them back a whole lot so we'll make sure they're locked in there pretty good but that back side back fan i didn't have locked in seems like let's check this side just to make sure i got it locked in there all the way yep it's locked in back fan's locked in all right now that leads us to the cabling on the fans you're gonna have two pmw fan headers here one for each fan 
by looking at the directions if you're going to use the low noise adapter which they do slow down the fans to a low rpm for you can have more of a quiet operation with them you need to use these before putting them into the splitter which you're going to add quite a bit of extra cable to have to deal with if you're going to do that but i know some people like the silence of it so it's an option we ain't going to be putting them on so we're just going to take the two cables here one from each fan and we do have an included fan adapter here a two-way splitter line up the notches on your fan header and on the splitter just push them one together here okay do the second one the same way all right then on your motherboard like i showed you earlier mine's right here it's a little gray header right here i don't know if you can see it or not but it does say cpu right above it you line up the little notches here or your connector a little piece of gray a little piece of plastic sticking up here you line that notch up with that little piece of plastic and you slide them down over as you can tell even without the low noise adapter that is quite a bit of cabling that we're gonna have to deal with cable manage i guess for right now until i get it put in the case we'll just take it slide it back here shove them down in here there we go something like that i think it looks pretty good not bad for having all that excess cable there and that's what it looks like when it's installed guys all right let me get reset up here and i'll come up with the conclusion to the video and let you know what i think about the procedure of this so that's the way we get this thing installed on the am4 socket and the day of the filming this thing goes about 110 dollars here in the u.s it is a very sturdily made cpu cooler it is pretty big it's pretty massive so you're going to need a full-size case or at least to make sure it's going to fit inside your case and around your motherboard heat sinks if you're going to be going with this cooler we can tell in the video that fan will cover up the rim slots unless you use that front fan flip it to the back of it and use it as an exhaust that way it pulls the air through but that's also an option i don't think it would interfere too much with the performance of the cooler speaking of the performance of the cooler and how well is it actually cool that will be coming up on the channel if you'd like to see a temperature testing done on the cpu cooler make sure you hit that subscribe button turn the notification bell that way you, you can be notified when that video comes live here on the channel but i think it's a pretty good deal so far it's pretty well sturdily built installation is very easy on it i showed you in today's video it only takes a few minutes to actually get it installed then temperature testing is going to be the main thing but that being a dual, dual tire style cooler like it is with two 140 millimeter fans i don't think you're going to go wrong with this cooler if you'd like to have more information or like to pick one of these up there will be links in the description below my other links down there that may interest you while you're down there in that description box and don't forget to do all that fun youtube stuff on your way down that description box with all that being said you all have a good day and i'll see you in the next video or live stream